Case 10. <laughs> I, can take, I think it's back to me. I hope I didn't skip anyone, but I think everyone went. Um, so, yeah, so this one looks like, um, like, from this power, it looks like there's maybe something abnormal in, like, the deeper dermis. Yeah. Um, it looks like there's just, like, increased space between the collagen bundles. Um, so when we zoom in, it almost looks like that, like, material is kind of bluish. I think some people describe it as, like, giraffe skin or, like, a marbled skate. Um, <laughs> but, it, yeah, I think so I think it's mucin, which is between the collagen uh, bundles pretty deep. So this is good for square edema. Very good. A giraffe skin or a marbled steak. I like that. It does look like a very marbled steak here. This is a really good example of sclera edema. And it's just like you said, there is abundant blue mucin, or if you're a pathologist watching this, myxoid material, hyaluronic acid, glycosaminoglycans, ground substance. All those words in this context mean the same thing. So in Dermpath, I use the terms mucin and myxoid interchangeably. But it's basically the reticular dermal collagen bundles are separated by deposition of mucin. But there is no inflammation. There is no real significant increase in fibroblast density here. It's just like normal dermis with extra mucin in between the collagen bundles. And it is usually on the trunk, and that's exactly what this skin looks like, right? Epidermis with like a mile thick of dense, regular dermis underneath it, okay? So this case is like almost too good to be true. I find that a lot of cases of sclera edema are much more subtle than this, and you have to kind of look closely for the mucin or sometimes do a mucin stain, okay? Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, uh, I don't see sclera edema very often in practice, but from talking to some of my dermatology colleagues, they've told me they actually see it relatively often in clinic. It just doesn't get biopsy because it's clinically recognizable. So there are a couple different forms, but one of the main forms that we think of is on an adult, on the upper, like back, and it's this dense, firm kind of hardening of the skin. If you try to kind of pinch it, it's hard to pinch the skin because it's so firm and, and tense. And I think there's some association with diabetes. I think there's also another variant that arises in younger patients, like after um, upper respiratory infection, like strep throat. Is that is that correct? Or am I imagining yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. No, that's right. Okay, cool. I don't think I've ever seen a biopsy of that. Again, I think it's probably recognized clinically. And that's it. Now, the, the difficulty with this disease comes with the fact that it sounds kind of similar to two other things. Scleroedema sounds kind of like scleroderma, which also could get confused with pretibial myxedema. So I have a little a chart that shows three examples and, and a quick way to, to, to tell them apart, and I'll put a link to that down below. But basically, to tell you quickly, myxoid only or a mucin only with no fibroblasts in between reticular dermis, that's scleroedema. Okay, pretibial myxedema is going to be in the shin, the pretibial area, and it's going to be the, the dermis, particularly right under the epidermis and down, completely replaced by mucin. So much mucin that it looks like a sea of mucin with displacement of the, the uh, collagen bundles. So it, you'll look at it and it won't look like dermis with a little extra mucin. It'll look like mucin with a little bit of dermal collagen left over. It'll look much more blue, not as pink as here. And then scleromyxedema, to my eye, doesn't really look that myxoid. It looks more like a fibrous kind of proliferation in the dermis that has increased fibroblasts, increased collagen, and a little bit of myxoid mucin mix, uh, mixed into it, okay? To my eye, it almost, the few cases of scleromyxedema I've seen almost made me think of like a dermatofibroma or something at first with a little bit of myxoid change, but then clinically it didn't fit. Okay, so in any case, those are the three, the, the kind of summary of the three things. But I'll put a link below that shows pictures and uh, and a little uh, a little side by side comparison for you to remember because I think they're they're uh, they don't really look alike, but they sound alike. So they're derm path name alikes or sound alikes, but not really look alikes. All right, but this is scleroedema. Probably this is the best example I've seen, honestly.